terminal velocity. Objects dropped near the surf surface of the Earth will accelerate downward at around 9.8 meters per second per second, and that acceleration will main, remain pretty constant, and the object will speed up and get faster and faster at that rate and have a constantly increasing speed. Now this is true when objects haven't fallen that far and haven't gained very much speed. So these equations are great for a condition that we call free fall, where the object is massive enough and again hasn't gained enough speed for the air to start having some kind of an effect. But if an object is faster and faster, just like if you have your hand out the car window and it goes faster and faster, you'll start to feel the uh, resistance of the air. When that happens, the, an object will no longer be in free fall and will actually no longer continue to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared and can even reach a maximum speed called terminal speed. Whoa, that would have been uh, pretty scary there. Uh, as you can see from the skydiver, though, uh, he had reached terminal speed before he got run into there. Um, and if this is a skydiver over in this illustration here, he was flowing fast enough, gravity is pulling him down, and he was flowing fast enough and picked up enough speed so that the air was pushing back and provided a force called the drag force, F sub D, the drag force, which ended up being equivalent to the pull of gravity that was pulling him down. So as he got faster and faster, this drag force got bigger and bigger. And here are all of the things that add up to the drag force. There's this first part called the drag coefficient, and the drag coefficient is roughly how uh, it's based on how the object itself, the shape of the object, and uh, so forth, um, how much drag there is because of the object's shape and everything. Then there's the surface area. Uh, the skydiver sprawled out and had a pretty big surface area to increase the drag force and uh, reduce his terminal speed. Uh, then there's the fluid density right here. This is the Greek letter rho, not a P, but I couldn't find that in font. So anyway, this is a Greek letter rho for fluid density, and uh, that's how dense the air is. Um, or if you were, this also could work in water with uh, drag force. So this is the fluid density. The V is the speed of the object. In the last example, that would be the skydiver speed. And notice that that's squared and divided by two. So here are all the factors that determine the drag force, which determines ultimately the uh, speed of the object uh, fly, falling through the air. There's a myth that says if a penny is dropped from the Empire State Building's 86th floor, it could kill someone when it hits them on the street below. Let's analyze that statement. This myth originated in the Big Apple, atop an architectural icon, the Empire State Building. The myth is that if you throw a penny off of a building this height, that it'll either get going so fast that it'll embed itself in the concrete on the, at the base of the building, or it'll hit somebody in the head and kill them. Adam and Jamie need to find out what is a penny's maximum speed when falling. In other words, its terminal velocity. It's time to see if Jamie's penny can achieve terminal velocity. Okay, the modified staple gun blasts the coin from three feet at the concrete block. Look, you can see the penny imprint. The penny traveled the three feet in 16 five hundredths of a second. The rig has shown that we can fire this penny at about 65 miles an hour, which is at the upper level of what studies have shown that, that the terminal velocity of a penny would be. So the test shows that a coin traveling at terminal velocity cannot penetrate concrete or asphalt. But what about flesh and bone? Remember, the penny myth talks about a penny shattering someone's skull. Enter Norma, Adam's ballistics dummy. 
enormous cranium will take the full brunt of a penny traveling at terminal velocity. Lights. Perfect hit. Lights off. Yep. The penny broke through the thin layer of ballistics gel, but the skull is intact. So, you ready to put that to the ultimate test? We've tried it on all the other stuff we've got. Want to try and catch it in your hand? The penny is leaving an imprint in the concrete when it hits, so, uh, you know, I'm a little hesitant about catching it, actually. The Mythbusters are about to find out what happens when a penny traveling at 64 miles per hour hits skin. I'll do it. Okay. But you got to do it too, otherwise, you know, you're like a wuss. Okay, you first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Still a wuss. I'll kick your Penny for your thoughts right about now, Adam. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. Three, two, one. Ow! <laughs> uh, that didn't actually hurt that much. Well, as you could see, Adam's hand uh, didn't get penetrated by the penny traveling at terminal speed. So they uh, used 64, almost 65 miles an hour for the penny speed, and that was its terminal speed, but they didn't really tell you uh, what was happening to get to that terminal speed. So that's what we're gonna do next here. So what happens is a penny, when it falls, it starts to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second per second. That's right when it starts to fall. As it starts to fall, uh, it gets faster and faster and faster. Well, as it's getting faster, it's moving through the air and it's having to cut through more air molecules. So the drag force starts to build up in the opposite direction as the speed picked up. And so it continues to fall and the drag force gets bigger and bigger and bigger. As the drag force is getting bigger, the net force is decreasing and the acceleration is decreasing and getting smaller and smaller. At some point along the way here, the drag force will become equal to the pull of gravity. And at that point and onward, from that point onward, when the drag force is equal to the pull of gravity, the penny will no longer accelerate. And when the penny is no longer accelerating, it will have reached a maximum speed. And that maximum speed is what we call the terminal speed or terminal velocity. And so a penny falls for probably about six or seven stories of fall, but then it reaches its maximum speed and it doesn't go any faster. And that terminal speed is somewhere around 65 miles an hour or around converting uh, to around 30 meters per second. So again, the penny starts to accelerate at 9.8, but the acceleration dies down to zero. So this is a big concept that the acceleration is zero after the object has reached terminal speed. So its acceleration dies down, the speed builds up, but how much it's building up is getting less and less and less, and then finally when it stops accelerating, the penny will have reached a constant speed. And that constant speed, if we come back here, is the terminal speed. So these are our graphs that describe the motion that's happening here. So a penny will speed up probably for about the first six or seven stories of fall off the Empire State Building, but then it won't get any faster. So a penny dropped off of a six or seven story building is just about as dangerous as a penny dropped off the Empire State Building. And neither one will kill you. They might make you say, ouch, like Adam did though. 64 miles an hour just wasn't enough to cause any kind of damage to a person. And then when we made it go almost three times the speed of sound, it still wasn't enough to break the bones. Yeah, I mean, the worst thing I can come up with is if you were looking straight up in the sky and you got hit in the eye, it probably wouldn't be very good for you. But even then, I don't know whether it'd take your eye out. I think we busted the heck out of this one. Myth busted? Yeah. So our penny reached a terminal velocity after about five or six or seven stories of fall. And uh, so from then on, it would be moving at around 64 miles per hour, around 30 meters per second, um, which is pretty fast, uh, but still not so fast that it could hurt you. A leaf reaches terminal velocity almost instantaneously as soon as it's dropped. It'll float down at a con roughly constant speed. But a brick, a brick would be very dangerous dropped off the Empire State Building because it's going to reach a really high terminal speed. So you got to be careful with uh, that kind of a situation. 
So what's really happening here? Let's go back to our definition of terminal speed. Remember that terminal speed occurred when the drag force became equal to the pull of gravity pulling the object down. So if I replace my equation for drag force, all of these components of that, and I replace gravity with mass times acceleration due to gravity here, this is the weight of the object, then I could solve for the terminal speed here of an object. And uh, doing the algebra, presto, our terminal speed is equal to the square root of the weight of the object, mg, divided by the drag coefficient, the surface area, and the fluid density. This is the air density. So by looking at this, uh, the things we have main control, we don't have control over the air density. Uh, so it really depends on the object's weight, and it depends on the surface area, and it also depends on the drag coefficient. But the big ones are the weight and the surface area here, are the two biggies for terminal speed. And obviously a brick has a pretty big weight, and so it's going to have a pretty big terminal speed. So do not fall under stand under uh, or do not stand under falling bricks. Let's take one more look at uh, some graphs of terminal speed and, and relative terminal speeds. Remember that uh, as an object falls, it's going to get faster and faster like our penny. But then when the drag force becomes equal to the pull of gravity and the acceleration goes to zero, the penny will reach a constant speed and that would be its terminal speed. Notice that a skydiver is going to reach a higher terminal speed than a penny uh, in this case. Uh, it will accelerate to here and at that point the acceleration would be zero and we'd reach a at a constant speed for the skydiver. And then uh, a brick would accelerate longer still and reach yet a higher terminal speed than a skydiver and its acceleration would reach zero right here because at that point in time that's when the drag force on the brick would have been equal to the pull of gravity or the brick's weight. So in all of these cases when the object reaches terminal speed its acceleration has gone to zero because the net force has gone to zero because the drag force has become equal to the pull of gravity. So that is uh, our Look at terminal speed. Scratches parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.